Uh, damn it. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the Steel City Blitz Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated, who by the way have re-upped for another year. Thank you so much, my family in Florida. Hopefully it's not too hot for you. We are part of the Variety Sports Network and of course the show originates from the Bradshaw Bourbon Studio. And uh, as you can see, we are uh, one short tonight. In fact, I, I have a feeling Scarpino is like face down at a craps table right now. Uh, well, no, face down in the sports book uh, right next door to Akershire Stadium. I, I think, Ian, hasn't he been there since like 11 o'clock this morning in preparation for today's NCAA action? I don't know if he was going to the tournament games or just going to the casino to gamble for the whole day. I'm not sure. He may have been at the games in Pittsburgh. Too, yeah, that's so. what I thought he was doing, and I wasn't sure. So, you know, yeah. knowing him, he's probably recreating that Jean-Claude Van Damme scene from the old igloo uh, where he's up above the uh, ice, in this case, the court. But uh, in any case, uh, who the hell knows what he's doing? Uh, hey, freaks in, and he, he he got new weed for the show. I I I don't I can't feel better than that. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, hello, Melvin. Hello, Burner. Uh, Aaron is in. Uh, yes, it's real life, Aaron. It's real life, my friend. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there there is so much to talk about in regards to this team, and I think Ben must have been having some uh, uh technical difficulties. Uh, oh, here he is. Here he is. He's coming back in now. There he is. So tonight it's just the three man band. So we are like Rush. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let one of you guys be Neil Pert. I don't know what the hell I'm doing on the drums. Uh, in any case, welcome everybody. And wow, where to start? Uh, ben, are you good to go with your technical setup there? No, you're not. Okay. Oh, I was muted. I'm back. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was belching and cussing and, and other stuff when I was trying to fix it, so I muted myself so you wouldn't be able to hear me. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. So, yeah. Um, yeah, welcome, everyone. And I uh, see we, we, we've we had some new people the last couple weeks. Love you guys. Thanks so much for, for jumping yeah, on. For um, yeah. Really, really we appreciate, appreciate the it. questions. We, the yeah, input, yeah, we'll do our best to get to everybody's questions as they roll in tonight. Um, you know, great point by Burner. Imagine someone two years ago telling you that uh, the next real starter would be Russell Wilson. Um, I, I, you know, it, it really is incredible. Um, two weeks ago, the Steelers quarterback room, uh, well, maybe not two weeks ago, but at one time, the Steelers quarterback room was, was comprised of three backup quarterbacks. Uh, and, yeah. and now, and now it's two starters. Um, is it well, I, I mean, I mean, let's, all I'm saying, I'm not saying they're not. What I'm saying is, is let's wait and see. Let's not decide that things are going to be so much better. I, I keep hearing, okay, that's the problem. My computer wants to update. Um, we keep hearing that we now have an above average offensive coordinator and, and we have two starters, two starters are quarterback. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget this offensive coordinator coordinated the offense for two years in Atlanta that got him fired. Mm -hmm. And these two quarterbacks mm -hmm. didn't play well enough for their previous teams to want to retain them. Okay. Yes. Sure. I think on paper, all of these things are improvements. Um, and that's great, but let's wait and see. Let's wait and there. see how everything meshes and how everything works. And, and let's see, let's not decide that. Oh yeah, this is the year. They're definitely going on a run for sure. This is what happens every fucking year, every goddamn year. We go into free agency. Steelers had a few players. Then they mm -hmm. go into the draft. Mm -hmm. They add some more players. Fans decide the team is now a talent juggernaut. They're going to crush everyone. They're going to win the division. They're going to make a run. They're going to be in contention for the AFC championship. And then when they don't meet that standard, the fans are pissed 
and we decide that it's coaching. It's coaching's fault because our evaluation couldn't have possibly been wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And it happens every True. fucking year. Every year. It's pathetic. I am sorry. I'm going to call it what it is. It's pathetic. So Ben is very positive tonight. Yes. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I agree, I'm calling Ben. calling it the way it is, man. I, no, I, I, that's what we do here, and and I, I agree. I, I think. I, I think it's great to be excited. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I think so do I. I'm excited. I, 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 there's not not just these guys, but but uh, uh, Patrick Queen and and just all this stuff that's gone on in recent weeks. But you know who wants us to drink you know, the Kool Aid? And it would be really good if he were here because we could we could bounce back and forth, converse yeah. points. Scarps. Well, you know, like I said, he's, Scarps he's is, like irrationally excited right now. He's probably on like his 18th icy mango. Um, no, it, it's that he he disliked White. he disliked Kenny that much. No, he did. He did. And now and, that Kenny and, is gone, he's like, "Yep, he, I'm drinking the Kool Aid. It's gonna be the greatest year ever." Da, da, da. Okay, sure. Well, you, it, it, you know, Ian, let me make this comment to you, and you can take it from there. Uh, there is an old old saying in the game of, of football that Foosball. if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Is that going to be a potential problem down the road, or is is Tomlin just going to stick to his guns? Russell Wilson, it's your team this year. I don't care what happens, it's your team. What, what's going to happen here? Yeah, it, Tom, Tomlin's Tomlin's not going to rotate quarterbacks. He hates rotating running backs for mm -hmm. crying out loud. Like if you think rotating running backs irks him, like rotating quarterbacks, there's no way. He's not going to shuffle. This isn't college. He's not going to shuffle guys in and out every couple series. Now, that said, my dream for years has been to see a formation where you have two quarterbacks on the field side by side in maybe like a pistol. So you never know who's going to get the ball. And then they run basically like a, a cross read, you know, sort of like a zone read or uh, sorry, a, uh, you know, like an RPO read off each other that. Whoever takes the snap could hand it off. He could throw. The other guy could run. The other guy could throw. And they're not going to do this, but it's the off season, so I'm going to talk about it. So if there's any high school coaches out there that want to take my idea and use it for your high school team, because that's probably about where it would work with like two quarterbacks and you don't know who's going to take the snap and who's going to throw and who's going to run. But I just think it would be super fun to see. You could do something like that with Russell Fields and or Ru Russell Fields. Russell. Yeah, <laughs> Russell Fields. It's both of them together, you know, Ru Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Is that a, and, is that a cookie company at the mall? Yeah. Or is that yeah. Russell, Russell Stover and Russell Mrs. Fields? Over and Mrs. Fields. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's no, it, Russell Wilson's going to be the starter. Justin Fields is going to be the backup. But we have now a backup who is also capable of coming in and surviving, yeah. unlike Mitch Trubisky was, who would come in and just die and took the worst possible sacks and threw off his back foot. I'm not saying Justin Fields doesn't have brutally bad mistakes on his tape. He does, yep. but he also has that one element that you can't teach, which is the ability to take the ball 70 yards for a touchdown anytime. Absolutely. And he's got, a, he has a pretty nice arm. He's not super accurate. He doesn't read the field well, but if you can nice teach ball. those things, yeah, he's got a nice long ball. If you, if you can teach him how to read a defense, which like sitting for a year behind a guy like Russell Wilson, might not be the worst thing no, in the world. It, there's far worse things. Yeah. Um, so I we're in a better spot now than we were two weeks ago. Yeah. It is the yeah. long and the short of it. I, okay, I let, let's play devil's advocate for one minute, real quickly, and then, yeah, then we can move I'm on. I'm shocked the that point. you want to play devil's advocate. I do. Uh, what if, mm -hmm. what if Russell Wilson plays poorly in the preseason and they need to go to fields? And that that is a possibility. Well, it's not that, like, that's exactly it's why I asked him that entirely. question. It's not discount that entirely. If that happens, it's very easy for the Steelers just to go, yeah, we're cutting you. Oh, absolutely. That's I'm one fairly of the, certain that his salary is guaranteed, but it's it's a million dollars. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. And that's not long. Uh well, let me yeah. play devil's advocate to your devil's advocate. Kenny Pickett looked awesome in the preseason last year, and Mason Rudolph looked like shit. And then when they got to the regular season. Excellent the roles point. were reversed. 
Uh, I think Mason looked okay in the preseason. He just looked like Mason. Keep in mind, he didn't get to play with a lot of the top players either. Right. He was playing with third yeah. string receivers and, and all that too. I, that was, yeah. That was he had some point. nice games. And, and one of the points we made on this show was let's keep it in context. In fact, yes. I argue with Scarps. Oh, Mason looked really good. He looked better than me. I'm like, dude, he's playing against fucking, he's playing against guys who are bagging groceries next week. Right. Come fucking on. And then, yeah, when push came to shove later, Mason actually showed up and actually was our best backup. Thank uh, God. I, 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 I do. I, there's a couple questions in, in the chat uh, about wide receivers. Um, Burner mentioning worried about the wide receiver room. Couldn't agree more. Um, and and D Drew's just asking about potential trades, whether it's Ayuk, uh, Terry McLaurin. We we keep hearing these rumors. We'll we'll get to that in in a few minutes. Um, I, I I mean, look, I, as far as Fields goes, I mean, I wrote an article for the site, you know, about six seven weeks ago that I didn't think this Justin Fields thing was going to happen, and it was strictly based on the fact that everybody was suggesting it was going to be for a number, you know, a number two, a, a second round pick. Which to me, I'm, dollars. huh? And twenty seven million dollars, yeah, and and the huge fifth year option, and I'm just like, no, 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 thank you, no, thank you. Um, and but but I cannot argue getting him for a six. That I know people are like, oh no, it could be a fourth. The only way it becomes a fourth is if Russell Wilson gets really really hurt or he really really sucks. Uh, yeah, because he's got to play fifty one percent of the snaps for it to get to this to, to be year. A, this year, yeah, this and, year. And so I, in other I, words, it's a six. Right. And I think we all uh, are in agreement as well that the Steelers will probably try to do some kind of deal with Fields, do you guys think? I would think. Rather than um, pay the, the fifth-year option? I would think. I would think they, they should just tell him, look, we're not going to exercise, but we want to extend you. Right. Um, we want you to be around here for the long term. So, you know let's talk about a deal. And then what you do is you structure it where he's, he's basically getting backup money with huge incentives. If he plays more than 51% of the snaps, yep. just like they just talked about or 60, whatever line they want to use. Right. Right. It's like, okay, if you play this many snaps, you're obviously starting games. Let's give you a $25 million bonus. Something along those lines, something huge to make it worthwhile, to make him want to sign it. Yes. Right. Something almost like what Jordan Love got from Green Bay was kind of yeah. where my head was. Yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, burner in with the comment <laughs> of the night so far. Uh, I hope the Eagles pick up Zach Gentry. What a perfect reunion. Oh boy. Yeah. Somebody, I, I somebody I'm I knew this week suggested that the Steelers pick Zach Gentry back up. Listen, guys, uh, I, I'm not going to repeat that story. <laughs> No, but, no, I'm not. Let's either. just say if that story is true, or even if it just got back to art, Zach Gentry's never playing in Pittsburgh again. Ever. I, I don't think so either. The Roonies are, are very, very Catholic. Um, shit like that doesn't fly. No. That's one of the reasons Todd Haley's not coming back. And I won't go to the into the specifics there either, but right. you're, let's you're, just say Todd's yeah. lifestyle didn't mesh with the team culture and he was very open about it. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, you're right. Scarps has mentioned this as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, that, that, that's funny though, burn. That's good. Um, I, you know, anyway, uh, Ian, did you have another thought on the QBs? Uh, no, no not good. beyond okay. what I already said. Yeah. I, I mean, now as far as Pickett. Uh, getting traded to the Eagles. We, we of course, uh, record on Thursday nights usually, and then the, the trade happened on Friday. Um, so it, it feels like forever ago. But, um, yeah, they, they trade him over to the Eagles. Um, I, did you did either of you hear if they had offers from other teams? I did not. I'm not saying they I, didn't exist, but I, I, I heard you know. that his agent, heard the Eagles were interested and asked the Steelers to trade him to the Eagles. Okay. No. So I don't yeah. know if anyone else wanted him or if they tried I, to nor they I. obviously didn't try and play hardball no. with the Eagles. No. Because it was a pick swap. I mean starting quarterbacks don't leave your team on a pick swap. Um, not typically, especially ones no. that have been drafted in the first round just two years ago. And let's, let's talk about that real quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
What, what are, did Josh Rosen get? He was a first round pick uh, and then he second, got traded. Then, a second and a fifth. And, second and a fifth, right. Yeah. And this is one I of Jen. the, we can get back to that in a second, but because that's a Justin Field trade that, that, uh, was compared to Josh Rosen. But let, let yeah. me just finish the, the Kenny Pickett thought. Pickett asked for a trade after mulling over the fact that the Steelers were going to be signing Russell Wilson for almost a week. Mm hmm. Like he saw all the fanfare with the signing on Friday, Thursday, wasn't happy about it. Um, and it, basically it, it touched him on the feels and the ego and he requested a trade and was gone the next day. <coughs> um, it's a really bad situation in Philly. He put himself in and I, I don't, and I, you can't understate this. You've got a 35 year old, quarterback on a one-year deal and he's the only guy in the room you're competing with mm -hmm. he's 10 years older than you yep. he's on a one-year deal yep and you're leaving that because your ego's bruised because they hurt your feelings to go to a team right with a quarterback who's actually a, a few months younger than Pitt, than kenny pickett even though he's got more experience he's a few years few excuse me a few months younger than kenny pickett and on a market contract through at least 2027, the chances that Pickett ever plays there are slim to none. Mm -hmm. He will sit yeah. on the bench for two years and then go into free agency and sign another journeyman type contract someplace and try and make a name for himself someplace else. He threw away his shot to be a regular starter because his feelings got hurt. I'm just going to call it out. That's what it was. Ultimately, that's what it was. Yeah. Yes. It, it was, and and it wasn't just last week. Um, I I know there are dueling reports from numerous Steelers writers uh, that two different things occurred with the whole Seattle game about you know was it him not dressing or was it Tomlin not having him dress? Blah blah blah. I feel pretty confident with what I know, um, but yeah, this this has been a pattern, and I think they were fine saying okay. Sorry, Kenny. If you're not going to be happy here, then we'll we'll move you on. Um, as volunteers, not hostages. Exactly, yeah. Ian. Exactly. It, and you know, it totally shocks me that a guy who skipped his bowl game and then, you know, basically had been handed things in his whole football career, the minute he faced adversity, turned into a giant whiny bitch and was like, "Oh no, you're not handing me everything <laughs> that I want." You know, this opportunity is slipping through my tiny hands. I can't grasp it anymore. And <laughs> I mean, we, we kind of saw it uh, yeah. after after Mason's first start when he yeah, was when, asked if he learned yes, anything exactly. by watching by watching Mason play that that day. And his response was no. Yeah. It's did, like, did dude, you, really? <laughs> Did you guys see the photo of, of Wilson sitting in the private jet with his, his child in his hands? And you could not help but notice the monstrous hands that Russell Wilson yeah, has. Massive hands. <laughs> and I thought it was just, I thought it was like this this jab at Kenny, like, look at this dude's hands, man. He's, I mean, uh, the guy, he's 5'10", he's got hands as big as Ben's. Oh, my God. They're, they're huge. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I found it funny. But I, look, I... I do I do I think that they wronged Kenny in some ways by hanging on to Matt Canada? Absolutely. We all yep. know he never should have been back at the beginning of last season. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Kenny made too many mistakes on the field. And I don't care whether he's running Matt Canada's offense or whether he's running Ken Wizenhut's offense. It doesn't matter. He he just he wasn't seeing open receivers. He wasn't making good reads. The constant spin outs out of the the, the pocket were just becoming more and more of a problem he was throwing so, off his back foot his, his back, mechanics yes. sucked. his mechanics went to hell it was like uh, dude what the yeah. quarterback 101 yeah. stuff kenny wasn't doing so yes simultaneously the oc can suck the offensive line can be deficient yeah. the yep. wide receivers cannot be trying hard all the time because they don't believe in what they're being asked to do and they don't believe in their quarterbacks okay yes. all of those things can be true and also kenny pickett is obviously not the quarterback of the future. And that was evident. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, I, it I know, I, you know, and basically I've been saying that since 
I don't know, January 1st for sure. And, and that doesn't mean we didn't want him to be. I, I don't care who's playing quarterback no, for Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to support the hell out of him. But at the same time, I'm going to be honest about what I'm seeing out of him. Um, and I didn't see a guy that was the future of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, it, it, somebody asked about Najee real quick, fifth-year option. I, I think they will pick it up. I think it's just a matter of time. I think it's May 2nd is the deadline. Uh, is. Anyway, Ian, go ahead. It's, yeah, Najee's is like fifth, six and a half million dollars. So they'll probably pick it up. Nine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, one other point on Kenny that I thought was kind of funny. I don't remember where I read it. It might have been in Jerry Dulac did an interview. Um, Rich Eisen. Rich Eisen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the thing that stood out to me was Dulac mentioned that after the Browns game, they were going to bench Pickett, but then they decided to fire Canada instead. And so just bear with me here because I want to make this point. Yeah. So. <laughs> the 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 one thing that Kenny had going for him that like they consistently went back to is oh he wins games he's brought us back in the fourth quarter the one time like Ben Roethlisberger's career there were plenty of times he failed at fourth quarter comeback situations sure. the one time Kenny failed at it it was like well shit here's the straw that broke the camel's back he couldn't bring us back this one time arguably against one of the best defenses mm -hmm. in the league and, and Grant, they were shit that whole day. Like they were just terrible that entire game. So I mean, I don't blame them. And it was it, it was a cacophony of things. It wasn't just that game, but it was kind of funny to me that it was like the one time he doesn't bring them back in the fourth quarter. It's like it was, we yeah. gotta bench him. No, we're gonna fire the coordinator. This is what makes changes. Is the one time we don't pull it out. Okay, but it's also the twenty fifth time we've seen him play. And for the first forty five minutes of most of those games, he played like shit. Yeah. I'm just going to call oh, yeah. it what it you're, was, okay? You're right. So yeah. it had nothing to do with whether or not he could bring them back in the fourth quarter that I, I, I see the irony, though. It, yeah. Fine. Yeah. It, it, ironic, whatever, if that's what yeah. they want, the way you want to put it. But right. it, consistently, what you saw was three quarters yes. of bad play from Kenny Pickett on almost every game. And we were trying to hang our hat on the fact that he was clutch and he was doing this and he was coming back. Shit, I was trying to believe it. I was. And I, where, I was the guy who I didn't want him to draft him. Where, where, but, where did they go wrong in his evaluation? That, that's what I want to know. Because they, the, 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 they there's a believed, lot they missed. They believed. Okay, look, coming out, the knock on Kenny Pickett was that he wasn't physically talented enough to be an NFL quarterback, but that his intangibles were off the charts. Okay, the guy interviews well. He has a good presence. He comes across as a good teammate. He's good at marketing himself. He's all of those things mm -hmm. teams like. Teams like that. Yeah. So yeah. they they overvalued those things and they undervalued his physical traits. And they thought, well, we can we can work with this. We can train him. We can make it happen. The the dude was too old, I'm sorry, to to have a high ceiling. He does. He, yeah. He's not gonna he's not gonna improve that much over the way he's performed to date. And, what and, I would and, tell you. Yeah, and to a point you made uh when it when it occurred, you know, Patrick Queen it has four years of experience under his belt now and he's is younger old? than is younger than Kenny Pickett. He's twenty four. Yeah. Yeah, I, I Jalen mean, Hurts, who he got traded to back up, is younger yeah, younger than, than he Pickett. is. We, we yeah. talked about that. Yeah, yeah. I, he's either I, I, two or three I, months I, younger than right. Kenny, and he's got four yeah. years of experience to to Kenny's two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin uh, Fields is younger than him too, right? Yeah, I'm only sure. by uh, nine months. Yes. yes, nine months. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more um, than nine months, but I, let's just to, call it nine months. To the question, I know some of the, the, the folks in the chat are, are talking about wide receivers and stuff. And, and you know, this week there was a lot of chatter that uh, – and, and rightfully so because Dulac on the Rich Eisen uh, show kind of kind of suggested, oh, there's something big coming, blah, blah, blah. You know, I I mean, uh, yeah, go ahead, Ben. I, I mean, Sometimes what, Dulac needs to shut the fuck up. I one, don't disagree. Because it, it gives – it gives the other team that that's trying to trade with the Steelers leverage when mm -hmm. they hear about these things. 
now they now they want the Steelers are like, oh well, now we know they really want to do it. I mean, shit. And, let's and there it was to no them. reason for him to say that either. No. And there was no. also no reason for Dulac to say uh, they were they were thinking of benching Kenny Pickett after that Cleveland game, but then they decided to fire Matt Canada instead. It, that's something he was fed. I'm sorry. Dulac is a team fucking mouthpiece. He was fed that probably by Art. Let's just call it the way it was. As that It's always been that way. And Dulac will report things like this because it gives him enhanced access. Okay? Whether or not they're true or not, eh, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you get it from the owner. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I, like, what other source is there, right? Yeah. Do you really need to confirm that? I mean, the owner, the owner of the organization told you that's what happened. Do you really need to confirm that with anyone? Or can you just go ahead and pass so, that along? So, uh, of the couple of receivers that were mentioned, I mean, obviously Brandon Ayuk has been the one most discussed, Terry McLaurin a little bit. I I, I can't see the commanders giving him up. I, I know they're in the middle of a huge rebuild, but who knows, they Ian? Just, yeah, Washington just paid McLaurin a $2 million roster bonus yeah. like three days ago. So... Unless there's some kind of like financial transaction associated with that, where we would like pay them back his roster bonus or something, which right. would still count against their cap, but cash in the bank is different than cap too. Um, you know, I have I have a hard time seeing that happening. The one that hasn't been talked about that I mentioned in the chat, and it's kind of been on my radar, is that um, AJ Brown really kind of turned it off at the end of last year and like didn't at all look like he wanted to play in Philadelphia. Attitude. Yeah. I mean, he, mm -hmm. yeah. And he played with Arthur Smith when he was in Tennessee for two years, had 2000 yard seasons and he's got a really big cap number right now. Mm -hmm. but if they would trade him after June 1st, like, well, you can you designate know, it a June 1st trade. You could. You yeah. Trade, well, yeah. You, you can. Yeah. Designate that's it a true. June you just don't yeah. get any cap relief until June 2nd. Right. Okay. So, but the, the point being, if they designated a June 1st trade, Philly has, Philly gets some cap relief. If they would trade him right now, Philly's actually in the hole against the cap. But trading him after June 1st would get Philly actually some cap relief this year. So that's one that I've kind of had my eye on of like, mm -hmm. hmm. But another like potential wide receiver diva attitude problem. Like, do we really need another one right. of that? But I mean, when AJ Brown is good, AJ Brown is damn friggin' good. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Ayuk, I think, is really intriguing. Um, just because of his age, he's you know on his fifth year option on his rookie contract. So he was a first round pick. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know he's only twenty six years old. He's an ascending player. He's really friggin' good. But you're going to have to pay him too. And that's the, that's the hard thing with that trade. And, you know, everyone, I saw a lot of people on Twitter saying like, Oh, why would you give up a first round pick for him when you could just draft someone? And they're absolutely right. But given the fact that you have to also sign him, that probably drives down the value of the pick you would need to trade for him. And I think a lot of times people just assume, Oh, this guy's really good. So it's going to cost a first round pick to get him. And maybe that's the initial asking price, but like, you know, a month ago, the Bears wanted a first round pick for Justin Fields and we got him for a sixth. So prices go down over time. Yeah. Yeah. And quickly in many yes. cases. Yeah. I, I, I think trading for a wide receiver would be fucking stupid. The okay. Steelers are exceedingly good at picking them. The last first round wide receiver they picked was Santonio Holmes in 2006. Yes. They are really, really good at picking wide receivers. Why wouldn't you pick a guy, have him on a rookie contract, and have him grow within your organization? Why wouldn't you do that? Rather than taking a guy that's going to command $20 million a year, why the fuck would you do that when you can take that $20 million and invest it in your team and spread it around and, and improve things elsewhere? I, I, I get that totally. I can, I can see trading for a corner. I can absolutely see that 100% because the Steelers are not great at it. And, and frankly, as Ian has pointed out, statistically you might be better off trading for a a mm -hmm. proven cornerback than drafting yes. one yeah. all teams yep. not just us yep but trading for a wide receiver when you're this good at drafting them is dumb it's a waste of resources i would not do it yeah i maybe 
I don't I don't think Aaron is off here. I, I think two wide receivers is is I, I'm not gonna say likely, but I think it's possible. I still think we have to wait and see what they do in free agency here. I, there, I think listen, I, I there think there are still some guys out there. What I'm sorry for cutting you off there. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh watching the tape, Tennessee tape, because the all the Atlanta tape is awful. Uh I mean it's just it's depressing. You don't even want to watch it. Uh the Tennessee tape. Mm -hmm. the tight ends are the linchpin they're going to play a lot of double tights yes here okay which takes one wide receiver off the field which devalues the wide receiver position a great deal in pittsburgh next year so i don't see two wide receivers being chosen this season i okay. don't i All see right. maybe one it won't shock me if i'm being honest if they don't pick another fucking tight end, because Connor Hayward is not a tight end. Well, He's in in, in my latest mock at SteelCityBlitz.com, uh, I did have a, a a tight end late. Uh, Tip Reeman from from Illinois, who is a decent pass catcher, but he's probably the best blocking tight end in the draft. Um, and yeah, and possible. I possible. Well, but when you, you look know, at the you way know Smith really good run uses blocker? his tight ends. Yeah, you know who's a really good run blocker is Darnell Washington. Darnell that Washington. guy, right. that guy is going to be the pivot. He's going to be the linchpin in this offense. And a lot of times, teams are going to key on him. They're going to be like, "Okay, Washington's out on this side. Mm -hmm. The run's coming over here, and they'll sell that for a while. And then when teams start biting on it, they'll go the other way." Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we. The, the problem for me is Fryermuth when it comes to that position. Um, yeah. I, I like the young man a lot. I, I like what he offers, but there's one thing that he doesn't offer, and that's good quality blocking. He tried uh, harder last year. Oh, I, there's no question. I, I would I never question give, the kids. Effort. I will give him that. Well, I I, I thought prior to last year his, his effort was – questionable I, I just i just think for him it's a matter of he he just does not have the strength and and the technique and and everything to to do it routinely. Uh, again like like his predecessor at penn state friar Muth is a weight room guy and was very strong yeah at penn state and and I, he didn't break those records that jesse james set but he was ascending toward them while he was at school so the, the dude doesn't lack strength. His technique sucks, and when he's right. getting beaten, he stops moving his feet. I I, I guess when when I I look at him, I I just yeah, you're right. There there's technique issues. Um, I would like to think that there's there's not any uh, effort issues uh, there, but. Um, he just doesn't seem to fit in the mold of an Arthur Smith type tight end. And looking at his contract situation, is this the last year of his deal coming up? Yep. Yeah, I believe it is. Um, you know, so they're going to have some, some decisions to make there. Um, D Drew's asked about Tyler Boyd. Look, here's what I can tell you based on the people I talk to. Um, there's been mutual interest, but at the same time, there is a feeling that Boyd might also be trying to drive up the price a little bit. He was, um, and he was, and but here, the, the, the thing is be looking nobody, to go elsewhere. Nobody wants to meet his price. <laughs> right. And you know, he had some pretty significant drops in some key spots last year. Um, and I, I think teams are a little leery of, of, you know, making him, uh, one of their top options right now. So, I you know more Look, power I, to him. But my understanding is the Steelers see him as a number three. Yes, not as absolutely. A, not as a number absolutely. two. Yep. So they're not willing to pay him number two, uh, wide receiver dollars, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is what he wants. And, and and speaking of number three, have you picked up on this recently? That that there is a. It seems to me that there's this growing amount of people in, in, in Steeler nation that seems to believe that Kelvin Austin is like the second coming of, of, I don't even know who, but I'll take I, returners. I, I mean, I <laughs> look, the young man missed his entire rookie season. I'm glad he had a nice full season this past year. He made a few plays. He did a nice job returning kicks. 
Um, but I, I would be more than thrilled with an upgrade there at the slot, especially in terms of somebody that can block. Yeah, I, am for I sure. right? They, wrong they, with that? I don't no, know. no, no. You're you're absolutely correct. And and again, watching the Tennessee tape from Arthur Smith's offense, they need a slot that can block. Yeah. So, um, I would anticipate one being signed, which is why I thought Boyd would be a good fit. Right, because he's a bigger slot and he yep. can block. And I was like, this guy would be a good fit, but I just don't know if the money is going to make it all to come together. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. The longer it goes, the less they'll have to pay him. The more likely he actually gets signed. Y- y- but, yes, you know, I mean, I think they're probably looking to pay him something like five million a year, and he wants like nine, right? Yeah, and, and I, that ain't I don't know this. I am, I'm speculating. I'm just throwing numbers out there. I think it's a fair I, speculation. I think that's what he wants, and I don't think that's what he's going to get. But you know, somebody might pay him more than the Steelers are offering. How, how does how does Van Jefferson fit? I mean, is he just a guy right now? I mean, I I, I mean, he he's, he's shown uh, some potential of doing some decent he's, he's high he's effort. Miles, guy, that. He's Miles Boykin, but he doesn't play special teams, right? And. Yeah, he doesn't block as well, <laughs> but he offers more upside as a pass catcher. Mm-hmm. Although he's dropped a number of balls, I'm not super impressed with the guy. He's he's no. a he's a number four, number five wide receiver. He is he is a high character guy, um, and they need that in the wide receiver room. Let's just be frank; Absolutely. they need guys. Yep. You need guys that are going to show George Pickens, look, this is how you act like a professional. You know, I mean, Pickens, yeah. is, no, I, Pickens I agree. is in Pickens is insanely talented, but he's not a guy who um, uh, showed an insane amount of uh, is, discipline is there, and focus last year. Do you see any? And this will be for some of our older fans as well. Do you see any? Similarity between George Pickens and Randy Moss. Physically. What what, what about in terms of uh, maturity? Uh, yeah, maybe a little. But the thing about this is it, Randy Moss is more talented than yeah, George Pickens. Yeah. Or was. We're, we're talking about like a super freak right there. Yeah. You know? I mean, he, yeah. the guy was ridiculous. Um, And yeah, he... He did some immature things, especially with regard to fans. Yes. Um, but, you know, the dude was ridiculously talented, and you weren't stopping him. No. No. I, that, I, 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 yeah. But, and I, mean, I asked that question just simply because I'm trying to make a parallel that maybe George Pickens will be able to mature out of some of this stuff. I, I would say that Pickens is less mature than Moss was. Mm-hmm. as a young player he's mm-hmm. not as smart as moss was as a young mm-hmm. player and he's not as talented as moss was as a young player now don't get me wrong two things one moss is a lot smarter as a football player than anybody ever gave him credit for like tom brady said that that no randy argument. moss was one of the smartest players he's ever been around ever yeah and we all know the guy was ridiculously, insanely fucking talented. I mean, oh, insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's a difficult comparison for me to make. Now, okay. that said, that's no slight to George Pickens. No, abilities. not at all. Not at all. Pickens is still, he's ridiculous. He is. Um, okay, Jen, that's funny. Um you know, I, I picture Russell Wilson going into the dorms at Latrobe a little bit like Rodney Dangerfield going into the dorms and back to school where he has them completely remodeled. He's got a hot tub put in, all that stuff. I can see that happening. It's I, not going to happen. But I think I, I think that that the Steelers will have talked to him about that. I really do. I, I think that whole thing in Denver where he had a private office. Mm-hmm. And he had his own staff. He had his own physical therapist, his own mm-hmm. trainer, his own doctor. Uh, he had his own people in his private office where he got his own yeah. training, his own, you know, yep. he got wrapped by his own guy. 
didn't didn't share any of the space with the team. All of that. Um, I think that the Steelers will have talked to him about that and been like, "Yeah, um, we don't do that here." Just so you know, right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, Tom Brady had some of that. Here's the you thing know. that that people don't know. Um, there's a little room in the Steelers locker room that is typically given to the most senior guy who is in the room, and that was Ben's. True, he had the it basically is. It is kind of a little, um, it is kind of a little office. Uh, mm-hmm. Nobody goes in there but that guy. Jerome yep. Bettis had it for a while. Yep, you're um, right. I've seen it. Um, there were there were a handful of guys that have had that room. I don't know who has it now. If I don't miss my guess, it's Cam. Um, yeah. You got your own little space, but it's adjoining the locker room. Right. You're it's, it, yeah. still, yeah. You walk out and you're in the locker room. And somebody can walk up and be like knocking on the door, and th- you're in the locker room. So it's not like you got your own space away from the team, and you're you're away, you're out of it. It's just like they had this extra little closet, if you will, and they turned it into a private space where that guy can go by himself. I don't know why he would want to do that, but you know, I I guess the privilege of seniority. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I do know that exists, so I don't. I don't want to, uh, right, uh, be too hi- hypocritical about criticizing Russell Wilson for it. But the thing with Wilson was, again, it, it was a private office with a private staff, and he did a lot of things away from the team with his own private people yes. on site that singled him out, and that won't be, that won't fly in Pittsburgh. No, no, that 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 can that can happen in some other organizations, but not maybe. this particular one. May, yeah, maybe. Um, I, I another another question about Najee hinting at uh, leadership issues. Do I think Pickens was part of that? Yes, but he was not the only thing. I, I think there was a lot there with with his comments. I think it was DJ. I think it was probably Pickett. I, I think there was a lot of things behind his comment there. Uh, okay. Ian, welcome back. I let, hope let's uh, let, let's 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 address, this, let's address this directly. Okay, sure. Um, DJ had issues with all the quarterbacks except for Mason. Right, seemed to okay. seem to really enjoy Mason. Yep, and 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 vocalized those. All right, he vocalized them, and he did so in front of the rest of the offense. Um, to. And in doing so, undermined his quarterbacks, okay? And his mm-hmm. offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let's face it, sucked. But still, it's not what you do. It doesn't fit within the team concept. Right. George Pickens is a young guy who's not super mature and is watching this happen. And it's a team leader, Jay Johnson, who's doing it. You're going to follow suit. This is This is the guy. This is the franchise wide receiver. This is the guy who's making $17, $18 million a year. That being the case, I'm going to pay attention to what he's doing. For sure. Okay? For sure. Which is yeah. why Deontay's not here anymore. Mm-hmm. Not there anymore. He's gone. Uh, and just to, to uh, I think it's Don Juan here. Uh, any chance it's going to piss off, you know, Pickens if we, if we trade for, for a number one receiver. I, I, we have I think one. for, I, I think George Pickens is your number one wide receiver. He is. Um, I, I think we want somebody that's in the Deontay mold of a good route runner, somebody that can run underneath that kind of thing. Um, but I, I don't, I don't feel there's any threat to to GP. At least I don't think so. I think. I mean, what are the two things receivers want? They want targets and they want touchdowns, and. I think when you have a guy like Russell Wilson who can actually get the ball to his receivers and actually throws a pretty nice deep ball, like he throws a really nice go ball, Pickens is going to like that. Pickens is going to see the ball more in you this think. offense than he did with Pickett throwing the ball where he saw maybe four targets a game. And, uh, you know, Scarps brought this up last week that you noticed after Mason took over and the Ravens were just blanketing Pickens the last game of the year. And he got, I think one target, but didn't have a catch. Like he didn't mouth off. He didn't complain about it. And, you know, but I think that goes to show like 
you know, when you have a quarterback who's leading the huddle, who's like actually leading the huddle and is like, look, I know I'm not throwing you the ball. I need you to focus. I need you to do this because it's going to help the team win. You get everybody on the same page. And it's like, right. you know, I, I think, I think Wilson's that kind of guy that he can command the huddle that way. And yes, Steelers fans are going to be incredibly frustrated with Russell Wilson's almost, uh, you know, uh, perpetual optimism that like, even after they lose, he's going to be like, yeah, everything's fine. We lost the game, but who okay, you know, everything's fine. We'll be all right. Like it, it isn't know, people are gonna, the, dude, the dude takes a lot of be, sacks. He takes sacks. Yes. But I mean, I would, I would trade more sacks for double the amount or triple the amount of touchdown passes too. Like you take the good with the bad, kind of like Roethlisberger. Yeah. Uh, real, real quick to, to Jen's question about Cam Sutton. Of course he played last year with the lions and, and he's already been cut by the lions because of a, uh, a domestic abuse charge down in Florida. Uh, our understanding is that he's going to turn himself in. He didn't even know about the charge. He was on a vacation or something and, and he is going to turn himself in. But, um, you know, I, I was actually with a Lions fan tonight, uh, but before the show, and he he made the same comment that we've talked about. Sutton didn't exactly have a great year, especially as the season wore on and into the that playoffs. Was the problem, yeah. And, and, uh, and, and he had a he had a rough uh, uh, de- December, January. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, so he was cut and Ben, you pointed out that because of the pending charge that could void the guarantees in his contract. Well, the, uh, the, the legal you know. process has to play out, right? Correct. So, so for right now, what they did was they designated it as a June one cut mm-hmm. to try and because he's guaranteed all that money. Right now, if, if the legal process plays out and he is, he's found guilty or he pleads guilty guilty or no contest to the charge right then they can void his guarantees and they can actually go back to him for some of his signing bonus money not just the one and a half million they gave him you know three days ago four days ago yeah. um and, and and the is it nine nine and nine and a half million nine or nine and a half million they owe him this season yeah, and, um, and in the meantime, sorry, freak. I had to put my baby back to bed. I missed <laughs> your comments. I'm sorry. I repeated what you said. Our our fans um, in the chat are amazing, and I'm sorry. Are. Yes, they are. My bad. You're not in time. Um, yeah, you're in timeout, freak. I just missed it. You freak. And, and no, uh, I do not think the Steelers will be looking to sign Cam Sutton, whether he's uh, uh, not guilty. It depends. Or it it on does. What but the I, deal I is. Don't okay. Don't get, cut Sutton's. Sutton's standpoint is one, I didn't even know about the allegation, much less the charges. I was on vacation. Right. And I'm I'm I've contacted an attorney. I'm turning myself in. That's it. That's all we know at this point. Correct. Um, if it turns out that this is something somebody made up, then yeah, maybe. And and the only thing I will add is you know. Hall of Famer Rick is is a, a good friend of ours and a good friend of this show, and he has never said a bad word about Cam Sutton. He's had to do some appearances with him and absolutely love the guy. Um, and I haven't talked to Rick since this dropped, but um, I, I, I know he's got to be surprised because everything we ever heard about Cam Sutton was that he was, you know, a one person inside the locker room and everything else. But look, we all have uh, bad moments. Um, And I mean, and honestly, you know, know, I'm going to draw this comparison, Martavis Bryant, you get mixed up with the wrong person or wrong people. No doubt about it. It can screw you up too. And Martavis got mixed up with some bad people. And if we're being honest, one of them was a significant other. Uh, correct. Yeah, correct. Um, Catholic guilt. Catholic <laughs> guilt. Nice hey. and well played, freak. It is what it is. You know, freak, <laughs> I, freak, I went to Catholic school too, and if that shit doesn't work on me. You're, you're impervious to Catholic guilt? Nope. You know why? Uh, yeah. A lifetime of my mother pulling that shit on me, and I'm like, now I'm like, nope, yeah. outstanding. Nope, I can, I spot it now. I'm like, nope. Mm-mm. You you nope. see it coming. Mm-mm. Oh man, I I want to talk about uh one other thing here, a little bit separate from the Steelers, and that's something called the hip drop tackle. 
Oh, um, the the league is going to probably ban this, despite the fact that the National Football League Players Association came out today and said, "Please don't." Um, and 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 look, this stems from the old Seattle Seahawks tackling drill, which they borrowed from rugby. Um, and it's it's something that has just kind of evolved into where you grab the player and you know by the hips and you just drop to the ground and it has caused some injuries. There's no doubt about it. But um, I, I I'm concerned if you keep banning all these types of tackles, what the hell's left? I mean, are you going to have to tackle a guy around the waist every time? I mean, I don't. This is a league where they can't even figure out what a catch is, what pass interference is. There's no way that they can equitably and consistently enforce what is or isn't a hip drop tackle. And And the statement that the players put out is exactly right that they're like there's no way this is going to make it so much harder to play defense because we're going to have no idea week to week what is or what isn't a legal tackle just like they don't know week to week what is or isn't pass interference right so it depends on the officiating crew it depends on whatever it's yeah to george's point what's left is flag football he's absolutely right that's yes george our folks in the chat are amazing yeah you're you're absolutely right it's and that's always the problem with officiating that these guys are so big and so fast and so physical that things happen in the blink of an eye and the officials have to make a snap judgment. And then you get a million slow-mo replays and everyone's like, well, that isn't it. They're, they're totally wrong. And it's, there's, there's no consistency to it at all. And there's that, no that's way. That's a to great point, it. Ian, that, that we get the opportunity. And even in the stadium now, mm-hmm. you get the opportunity to see all the slow motion angles and all the slow motion, this, that, and the other. The referee doesn't get that when he's making a call in real time. Yeah. And and these calls are we've already seen it. They're going to continue costing teams wins, yeah. and and even playoff opportunities. Um, and and it, they they are just making this so much freaking worse all the time. Uh, I I don't know what's left. I I, I just I just don't. Um, the the one thing about the way that was written up this 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 rule they're going to vote on. Yeah, is and it it gives me a tiny bit of hope. Was if the player making the tackle lands on the ball carrier's legs, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. that's when guys get injured. When a guy lands, when the tackler drops his weight and lands on the back of the yes. ball carrier's legs, if you can avoid that doing a hip drop tackle, and you can then it shouldn't be called, in my opinion, at all. What about I don't know. We'll I... see. And by the same token, if you're a 185-pound DB and there's a 240-pound running back, yeah, how the fuck else do you take him down in a one-on-one situation? Okay. So so let me ask you that question. Or Nick Chubb. He or... doesn't even weigh 240. What about well, him? But, yeah. but how did guys take down Earl Campbell in the 1970s and, and early 80s? Like that, well, that, and they had right. to deal with tear. They had to deal with tearaway jerseys and all kinds of other shit. Yeah, and and and, and Earl Campbell never said, "Oh well, geez, guys, they're gonna I'm gonna get hurt with these hip drop tackles." I, I mean, yeah, you know, but maybe he should have because Earl Campbell can't walk now. You realize this, yes? Well, he's he he's he had, can walk, had, but he can't walk well. I'll give he's you had that. Hip replacements <laughs> and knee replacements, and he, he the dude's using a walker literally. I know, I know. I, I I just I it just frustrates me because I I don't I'm just saying I don't like where this is headed and I agree with you and 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 no. we talked about this in our own private chat and and my comment was what the fuck they're gonna make it flag football pretty soon this is bullshit yeah. and the NFLPA coming in going yeah no this we don't want you guys to do this this doesn't make any sense um and we speaking we're speaking for the players who don't want it either. Yeah, uh, you know, I I can see if you make it objective, and you say if the player does this and also lands on 
the the ball the carrier's legs. Legs. If he lands on his legs, then it's a flag. But otherwise, no. Yeah. No. I, 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 I mean, I saw an awful an go. awful lot of of what I thought were good tackles by small guys last year. Yeah. People on social media were calling hip drop tackles. I was like, that wasn't a hip. That was a good tackle. Right. It, it was a. This is all I can do to bring him down. Tackle. That I, was I, a I, good I, tackle. Yeah. yeah. For for small uh, to Mark's point, the quick answer is for small guys against bigger, whether it's a running back or tight end, you either have to go for their knees or their ankles. That's the only spot you can get them down. Like if you hit them, yeah. yeah. If you hit them in the thigh or higher, you're gonna bounce. The smaller DBs are gonna bounce right mm-hmm. off them and Great not point by Shub. Vinny too. Again, yeah. Nick Chubb weighs two twenty, but the dude has got tree trunks for legs. Good luck catching that dude. Yeah. Good I, luck. Hi, Matt. When Troy Hi, Vinny. Played, Welcome. When Troy played, people would criticize him for being an ankle tackler. I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit you? if he tackles people by the pinky toe. Right. What I the hell else was he going to do? He was outweighed. I don't care how he tackles people. As long as he gets the tackle, I don't give a shit. Do you yeah. remember? Do you remember the game against Kansas City? I think it was... I think it was the uh, the Tyler Palco game that we won on Monday night. But Kansas City threw this like weird throwback pass to an offensive lineman or something like that, and Troy was the only guy out there that had and to he tackle. Blew him. the dude up. No, he no. didn't blow the dude up. The the it was like it was a lineman who outweighed him, and right. Troy hit him in the thigh and injured his shoulder. Oh, okay, all right. And and I remember when Troy no, tackled no, no, no. him. Wasn't, like, wasn't that wasn't that he went to the sideline and and uh, Ryan. Pulled his shoulder back in place. It out? I think well, no, I think that he was put it back in place. He popped it in rather. Yeah. But yeah, he like, just gave it a yank and put it back in place. Yeah, but I, I remember that play because I was because the dude was so big and I was like, and I remember seeing Troy coming to him. I was like, I hope Troy doesn't hurt himself. And then he did hurt himself because right. he hit him, he hit him yeah. too high. So yeah, you were you guys are absolutely right. For small guys, there's only one way to bring him down. That's to go low. What um, I, I, I saw some stuff about or him. go high and do the hip drop. Right. Which, again, uh, is fine as long as you're not injuring someone. And typically the way these guys get injured is the, the tackler lands on their legs. Yes. The, Usually I, no at, the knees, at the knees or below. Yep. yep. That, okay? that The landing on the legs. And, and it's, it's and very even similar. If you, if you accidentally landed on his hip or his ass, that's not really going to cause an injury. But landing on his knees or his ankles absolutely is. Yes, that's it where is. the brakes come in. Yes. Yeah. There's no no, no doubt about it. Um, and 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 I, I I'm gonna plead ignorance here. I know they're toying with a new kickoff rule a little bit as well. Something about a, a touchback maybe being at the 35, and they would be getting rid of this this uh, fair catch inside the 25 thing. Um, and teams would have to notify officials if they if they're going to do an onside kick, which I hate. Um, I mean, it, I, I saw a proposal. I get it, but I saw a proposal I liked. Okay, and and it was this: the the ball is lined up at the thirty five as it normally is, right? And right the the kickoff team is lined up at the fifty, and Got the it. blockers for the opposing team are lined up at the forty. Okay. So that's a little like the and, XFL did. Yeah, that's the and, XFL. Right. And no one can move until the ball is caught. Right. It's basically okay, a so, standoff until the ball so, is caught. Yeah. What it does is it sets things up so that you don't have these huge collisions where guys are at top speed right. running at each other. And the science is clear there. That's where a lot of the concussions were happening. Correct. Yep. Correct. So even, you know, 10 yards, 10 yards to me, I mean, I remember, you know, think about this Oklahoma drill, like we, <laughs> we, still agree. Yeah. we ran that shit. They yeah. don't even run that yeah. anymore. No. They, no, had the, they had the dummies on either side. So you couldn't go around each other. Oh, you had God. to go at one another. And it was, it was about what? Seven, eight yards. Oh yeah. Between it linebacker and tailback. 10, maybe tops. And you're both laying down on your backs and they say, go. And you both had to get up. And haul ass top speed because the other guy is trying to take your head off. So you got to take yeah. his off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, think about that. I'm I'm just yeah. saying. 
you know, I, I, I get e- it. even at 10 yards, you're going to have um, some pretty strong collisions, but they're not going to be so bad. And and they're also not going to be those wedges either. Right. Well, the, the wedge is gone anyway. The wedge is gone, but just, just you know, hitting on that point again that Remember you're not going to be able to do that. Roy either. against the wedge? Remember that shit? Oh, my God. <laughs> Orpheus Roy, that's right. God, that he was been a, so good. He would have yeah. been a great T-shirt these days. Yeah, and, um, and that was funny too because Cowher was like, he was a last-second sub. Cowher yeah, run in there. He's like, hey, I just need somebody. Just go down and hit the hit hit the wedge. <laughs> hit the wedge. Just just do that. That's all you gotta do. That was his assignment. And he went yeah. and did it, and he was like, yeah, you're on this team now. You're that you're gonna be on this the kickoff team from now on because we need a guy who can do that. And all he did was run down the field and knock the shit out of the guys in the way. He did. He did. He he wouldn't survive today. I mean, he. Well, he I mean, he'd get uh, fined. <laughs> right. Right. Vinny um, has a good point here. Um, yeah. That the NFL is ruining such a simple game because I've said for a while that football is the greatest game that's run by the dumbest people. And, oh. Yeah. No doubt about it. I, I. You know what? And I don't want to get off on a tangent on this. Baseball is run by some stupid fucking people too. You're you're, you're opening the season in in Korea. The major league baseball opening game is in Korea at like three in the morning. That's I'm sorry, that's just stupid. I, but I will know. say one thing that baseball is doing really cool right now: that 4D camera. That shit is cool. I, what are they doing? Help me out here. I didn't see you it. can see all the way around and they they've got the whole thing going. So they've got angles okay. 360 all the way around the play so they can do slow mo from whatever angle they want to. I, I admit that's pretty cool. It is cool yeah, as like it. shit. Yeah. They don't have any straight angles. Everything, everything like plays at the plate. It's all that. 4D camera. I'm like, whoa. I mean, where, it's not even really 4D. But where is that camera? That's what they're calling it. Uh I I think it's a collection of images stitched together. Okay. I was gonna okay. say I, you, I mean it you has have... to be it has to be given given the angles based upon what I've seen. Right. It has to be a collection of images images all stitched together. Uh, probably I don't know. Yeah, Axis, yeah, I don't know enough of, about it. Axis or Fleer, right. one of those other companies that makes a really sure. high angle, a high end camera, and 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 gives you the ability to stitch all that together at the recorder, right? So you've yeah. got this thing going, that's that's recording all of it real time, and then when they do the replays, that's when you can see it all the way around, and it's just so the technology is so cool. God, well, I, I see. No I'm not really a baseball guy. No, I'm not that, either. Anymore. That impressed the shit out of me. I was like, okay, yeah. baseball wins this round. Wow. Let me, uh, bef- before we wrap things up tonight, let me get back to the Steelers a little bit. Um, oh, e- Ian, Is that what we're you... talking about the Steelers? Well, I, we, we probably should. <laughs> uh, Ian, we're, you know, we're, we're into that phase two or three of free agency now. Um, where do you see the Steelers going here? This is usually where we shine. Yeah, um, I will say this. I've said it before on the show, and I'll say it even more now that you know we've dealt Kenny Pickett, we traded for Justin Fields. Omar Khan is not afraid to address positions of weakness, and I like that. You know, say what you will about him in other aspects, but the fact that and people on Twitter that were like, oh, Omar Khan's getting rid of all the bad contracts or all the bad draft picks from Kevin Colbert. I was like, you realize he was there. Like, he was in the building. He was right, part right, of the right. Kevin Colbert team. He so, didn't hang out in the custodian's closet during all that time. Right, right, exactly. It's, you know, it's like it's not like it's a completely different era. They promoted a guy in-house. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's not like it's an outside guy coming in, cutting bait, but it, it really is the message of if you don't perform up to our expectations, mm-hmm. I'm trying to win a Super Bowl, and if you're not up to that standard, we're going to replace you. And I love that. So, it, I, you know, whether it works or not, at least he's trying. And at least we're not stuck with like, oh, well, I guess we're going to go through another year of this guy because we drafted him, and, you know, we'll see what happens. But, no, I think in today's NFL, 
if you can do a good evaluation and realize because the draft is always a crapshoot. There's always hits. There's always misses. You never know. Yep. And if the sooner you can cut bait with a miss and not have to continue sinking yourself, the better off you are in the long run. So I'm pretty happy with it so far. I think there are positions that we need. We need a slot corner. We need a couple more backup cornerbacks. We need a slot wide receiver. We probably need a boundary wide receiver. I like Van Jefferson, but he's kind of more of a rotational player. He's like a number yes. four. Um, you know, he can do a couple good things for you here and there, but he's not an every down kind of guy. Um, it does seem like we've been trying to add some speed on the offensive side of the ball between the two quarterbacks and then Jefferson, who ran like a four three forty. So, you know, speed kills. That's a good thing. Um, and we still need a center and we need a right tackle. And that's kind of, but I don't know if they're looking at the draft or free agency or kind of see what happens. So there's still guys out there. There's centers out there. This is a really good interior lineman draft too. So we'll see. I, I, yeah, but there's, yeah. th there's plenty of, there's plenty of depth guys out there. I guess I'm saying that you could go out and find a slot corner. You could find a slot wide receiver right now, and then maybe wait till after the draft and see what else happens. Slot corner is becoming so freaking important um, that I, I, you know, no disrespect to Shannon Sullivan. I, I think he played very, very hard, but I, I don't think he's a Steelers slot corner. Uh, he, he just doesn't fit what we like to do. Um, and I, I continue to get the feeling that he was just kind of a stopgap uh, all along and a bad one. Yeah. And, and I mean, we need desperately to upgrade that spot. And I love the signing of Deshaun Elliott because uh, he, he's an inside the box guy and very well could allow Minka Fitzpatrick to just, you know, stay in the Again, back, do what Elliot, he do. Elliott you know? can invert and yes, play he can. cover two. He can play yes, cover he can. two. He's a free yes. safety by trade. He gives them lots of options. There's no doubt about it. He's not um, really a free safety anymore, though. No, I would not classify him as a free safety at all. No. Um, I think maybe when he came out, yeah, okay, but not now. Not Did now. you see his press conference? Like it was like inject that shit into my vein. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's a he he's, was great. He's a high integrity team player. I I I, fuck, I was so psyched. Real yeah. quickly, yeah. to Ian's point regarding all the signings this year, I I I think. I, I want to temper everyone's expectations for what Omar will do no, each season. He's raining on our parade. I am. A, I'm peeing on your Cheerios. Listen, um, this year there were a lot of moves because there were a lot of fucking holes, a lot of holes. Yeah. And hopefully as the roster improves, all those moves won't be necessary and we'll see, we'll be seeing fewer of them like we used to see. Old school Steelers football, old school Steelers free agency, where Steelers didn't really add a lot because they didn't really need a lot. Let's just be frank. Okay. This year, they've got to be aggressive because there are a shit ton of holes in on that roster. And don't get me wrong, they've they've traded some guys away and they've cut some guys and mm -hmm. they've created mm -hmm. holes themselves. And I I appreciate the message that's being sent by those those cuts, by those releases, and those trades, which is basically get on board or get the fuck out. I appreciate that so much. I really do. But I wanna I wanna temper the fans' expectations for 2025. The Steelers may not be as aggressive next year because they're gonna have a better team. They're gonna have a better roster. They're not going to need as many players. I I, I'm just two. perusing. I, 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 I would love Roback. Uh, just just bring him back. Bad Let him come to camp. Alter ego, Frank. Yeah, Fuck you, know. you Dan. Um, <laughs> I like you know, how George mentioned George chimes swearing. in with the, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, we were doing so well on the language, and then he jinxed it. Uh, oh, no, I was swearing like, first thing, George. You must have yeah, chimed he, he in early. He actually was, late. George. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'm so glad that our fans just enjoy our shtick and it, they know well, the what fact that it's, it's the opening night of the NCAA tournament. And we've had as many as 30 some people on here watching tonight. It's truly a dedication to, uh, to all of them. You guys are the um, best. Yeah. Uh, 
because uh, because right now Scarpino is 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 like we said we we think he probably has tumbled down the stairs. Uh, would have been really and, fun and, to have Scarpino on the show. Tonight. Oh my god! If he calls I mean, in, this been place is awesome because yeah. he's been drinking since eleven a.m. Yeah, he he's watching the NCAA there uh, in Pittsburgh. Uh, he got to see some good. Did, did that's where Oakland beat Kentucky tonight, isn't it? Yes, in it Pittsburgh? is. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he's gotten to see some good games, dude. Ten three pointers tonight for the Oakland Grizzlies. Good for good for them. They're um, up in your neck of the woods, aren't they? Uh, they're sort about of. two and a half hours east of me. Okay. Yes, yeah. I, I had a Oakland very good friend who? who's what? Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh, yeah. So John but Calipari, Co- Coach Cal. Gone, See, huh? Scarps jinxed it by posting yeah. that picture of him and Coach Cal today. Yeah, what a dick! It's his fault. Jinxed. Yeah. Uh, I I'm Fucking worried jinxed. about our I'm him worried about our wide receivers. I'm worried a little bit about our defensive line. Um, I still think we got to add in the linebacker spots. I, I mean, I okay. To me, one the the priority is center and tackle. But then uh, they oh, need a wide I, they need a no wide question. receiver. They need a nickel corner. Okay. One, two, three, four. And yeah, then they no need argument. depth. They need depth on both lines. And they need depth at corner. At linebacker, it kind of it all depends on Cole Holcomb. Can he come back? Can he play respectably this year? I mean, they know better than we do. Can he do it? Well, and and Ben, didn't didn't you also note that from what you're hearing, Holcomb's injury is so severe that I mean it's possible no, no. he might be done? No. No, they no, no, posted no, a video no. of him like working out this week. Okay, good. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. What what I heard is he was walking without a limp in January, but that doesn't mean that he can run. No, I, that that that's an often used misconception just because a guy isn't limping doesn't mean shit yeah and it, it's more about change of direction than it is straight right. line running so the guy the guy can run in a straight line but can he change direction and play linebacker we don't know yet so that's kind of up in the air okay. um and you got mark robinson who seems to be kind of a one-trick pony I, it, i'm it, not it, hearing basically what i heard about robinson is has some potential not real smart, right? Got bigger last season. Uh, maybe uh, they needed to be. Robinson may, would have, may have lost some explosiveness. Yeah, I, you know. I, I don't know what to to think there. I don't know. Um, you know, we'll see. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I love the Deshaun Elliott signing. Um, you know, I don't think he's going to be a superstar, but he's. Carol Edmonds again, which is what we yes. need. We, we need exactly. a guy. To, I don't need to, a superstar. Yeah. We need just we just need a guy to hold down the position respectably and let Minka do his thing. So Minka can be Minka. Yes. Yes. And then yeah, um, you keep KZ, you do, and hopefully he stops the head hunting and doesn't get suspended again. Because if he ha- even has one of those, he's gonna get suspended. One, yeah, K- KZ's uh, un- under fire. Um, I mean, he's gonna yeah. be watched like a hawk. Um, yeah, no they, they need it. to be able to play those three safety sets. Um, they do, they, no, absolutely. I agree, I agree. Um, Ian, right now it's uh, what is it, March 21st, so we're still more than a month out from the draft. Yes. Uh, first. Two picks in the draft. What positions would you say right now the Steelers will go with? Offensive line and wide receiver. All right, second I'm, round right I'm, wide receiver. Okay. I'm being, I'm being, no, uh, in you're being vague order. about which, 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 which offense exactly. Line ben, speaking. Ben, cut yeah. on that. I'm being yeah, vague whether it's a guy. tackle or a center, right? But yes, yeah, so I'm being. I'm gonna say offensive line because I don't. As much as I would love them to go tackle center in the first two rounds of the draft in either order, right? I don't think they will. I think the need at wide receiver is greater unless they trade or sign someone as a number two and then only need a slot receiver. What, what is but, deeper? What is deeper in this draft center ooh. or tackle? Uh, here's the tackle. thing. Though. Well, tackle. okay. Okay. I, here's the thing. Yeah. Like looking at the history of NFL drafts, I've, I've got 
spreadsheets on drafts going back to 20 well actually 2000 um but the like the top center is maybe drafted in the first round like usually picks like 20 to 40 is your range for the top center right by pick 20 you have at least four offensive tackles that are usually gone so like yep. tackles go off the board fast. absolutely yep. and why so, is that because they're the high demand position because they protect the quarterback's blind side because they block who the edge rushers yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, as we've seen in the past, you know, we saw it in the Super Bowl with um, with Mahomes a few years ago when they played Tampa, when um, Vita Vea just ripped him up, when we when Aaron Donald ripped apart the Bengals. If you can't stop the interior rush, and that was a thing for the Patriots too, the time the Giants beat them, actually both times the Giants beat them, they mm-hmm. rushed Brady up the gut. That Poor guys. If, you, if you can't beat, if you can't block the middle then your whole offense is fucked. So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying tackle is not important, but center is extremely important as well. Yep. So, I, I mean, think our, but, our bad center what I'm play saying is, really stood out last season. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Because yeah. because our, our guards were so good, and it, it made our center look even worse. So, please finish your mm. point. Yeah. Mm. My point was, you could still you you could probably get the third in this draft maybe the fourth or fifth best center in like the third round but by the third round you're probably talking 12th 13th 14th tackle off the board so like you're exactly way lower going. tier on tackles than you are on centers so you're you're better off if you have a shot for one of the first round tackles, like we had to trade up for Broderick Jones because we knew the Jets were going to take him. But that was one of those like, if you want to get one of those guys, you got to make a move to get them. Yep. And it was, I was completely on board with it then. I'm still completely on board with it now. And yeah, other than converting Darnell Washington to an offensive tackle, which I don't think they'll actually do, even though maybe they should. Right. If you want, mims or somebody else as a tackle then you got to take him in the first round because a guy of that quality is not going to be there in the second or third round whereas the drop off in center from what you could get in the second round to what you could get in the third round probably isn't as much agreed yeah ben where, where are you on the first couple of draft picks right now on march 21st today Okay, your first round pick is wherever you get the best value at either center or tackle. And and there are it's really good value. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, Mims is a young player. He's not very experienced, but God, he's a, an incredible physical specimen and he's yes. young. Yes. And 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 he's young. Yep. So that would be really really hard to pass up. For example, um, the tackles are, are really good this year. So I, for me, it's center tackle first two, but yeah, um, I think the really, the higher end tackles like JPJ is going to go in the first round and there are going to be a couple of more guys, at least one more taken in the second. So waiting to the third round, you can probably still get a decent player to play center, but our last third round center was Kendrick Green. So I'm a little scared about a little scared. I, I, I a little, understand a little, that. a little scared by by waiting that long. Our last first round center was Marquise Pouncey, and he was a perennial All Pro. That turned out okay. Yeah, it kind of did. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I I I'd love to go center. If JPJ is there, but by the same token, really good tackles are really hard to come by. Uh, it's tough. I don't know. You, yeah. uh, and I'm glad I don't have to be the guy who makes that decision because right. uh, you need both. So you're basically going to be objective in that moment and say, where is the best value? Yeah. That's the, and, and then that's in the second round, from. you're going to go, okay. Where's the best value, center or wide receiver? Maybe, it, depending on if it, whether or not they sign somebody. Um, or potentially, 
tight end. But as you know, the Steelers, if they have a high grade on someone and he's still there in the first round, mm-hmm. they kind of re- will go there. regardless of regardless position, of position. They will take the guy. Do I think they'll take a quarterback in the second round? No, I do not. But um, it wouldn't shock me if they took a tight end or... When you say take a tight end, you're talking earlier than perhaps thought? Yeah, a tight end yeah. or a corner. That wouldn't shock me. No, at all. And not, I'm, not what I'm, I'm not talking about what I would do. I'm talking about what I think they will do. Right, absolutely. Yeah. If they yeah. have a high grade on someone, like they had a first round grade on Joey Porter last year, which is why they didn't trade out of that spot. Mm-hmm. They took a bunch of offers and went, we just, we have a really high grade on this kid. And we just think for us, this is the, the best thing to do is just take him. So they took him yeah. instead of, instead of trading out of the pick, which they considered and shit. We were all rooting for him to do it, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I, they I remember that very well. They didn't. And I, I mean, nope. it, it looks they got so far like that was a pretty good choice. Right. right. Like they knew what the fuck they were doing. Right? right. So have a little faith. They probably have got their shit figured out. I, it probably. You know, Jan yeah. was talking earlier about, about how uh, at one point we were arguing whether or not, uh, whether or not Omar Khan was a football guy, and he's not. He doesn't watch film, or he didn't. No, no. Historically, he's not that guy. He's not a guy who does cut ups like, like Kevin used to, and and evaluates character and does all that. He he is involved. I'm not trying to minimize his involvement, right. but the thing he's done is he's identified the areas where he's not as strong as other GMs, and gone out and gotten help in the mm-hmm. form of Andy Weidel. Mm-hmm. And he's beefed up his his scouting staff. And I got to give him props because so far, so good. I, I, I'm just saying. I'm in the same boat. I, I have very little uh, fault to find with him right now. Um, the one other thing I'll say, because this has been a, a bit of a topic on Twitter lately, is... You know, the years where, you know, people talked about Kevin Colbert's last few drafts, whatever. And I was a big fan of, of Kevin Colbert during his time. But to me, the, the big divide is, and Ben hit on this exactly, that when they stuck to their board and picked the best player available, even if we thought it wasn't a need fit or was a, you know, like why they like Juju that we were like, why they take Juju? They've got receivers at the time or, you know, even. Yeah. Even TJ Watt, like they needed another edge rusher, but they had just drafted Bud Dupree a couple years before that. So we're like, is this really? But when when they stuck to their board and took the best player available, that's the picks that worked out. When they reached for someone in a position of need, when they were like, oh shit, we don't have a running back. We're going to take Najee Harris. Oh shit, we don't have a quarterback. We're going to take Kenny Pickett. Like those are the ones that haven't worked out as well. Yeah. So I, I, I would agree. I, I think you just, with the draft, you just pick the best player available and you go from there. I don't think Najee was a bad pick. I I think picking that position in the first round is a bad idea. And I, especially when your offensive line is weak. I, that's I think my two cents. Yeah. It was a, if, if it was 19, Artie Burns. Yes, Matt. Yes. Artie Burns. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> we needed a corner really bad. So that, that punctuates Ian's point. We needed a corner really bad that year, and he was the guy who was left. So we wanted William Jackson the third, and he was gone. Into the Bengals. So we were like, well, our consolation prize is already is already Burns. Uh hey Ben, do you remember who the next cornerback taken in that draft was after Artie Burns? Xavier Howard. Xavier Howard. Yeah, he's had a decent career. Yeah, pretty, pretty damn good career. Yeah. Um he, he he doesn't suck. Yeah, he does not. No, no. Uh, any final thoughts before we uh, wrap it up tonight? We have no Casey Kasem tonight. No, no. Just Casey that tonight. Scarps is an asshole for thinking yeah. that that <laughs> he... the NCAA tournament is more important than all That's of right. you. All of us he basically. He yep. Scarps basically tonight gave all of you the middle finger and, and said, "Fuck off! I don't care about the podcast. I'm and... going to go watch 
basketball and get drunk. And let's be honest, his brackets are probably already in the trash now. Anyway. Exactly. Um, you know, so it's just an opportunity for him to to go get drunk, but uh, and, and not enter, I, and not enter, be entertaining to 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 our crew here. That's right. That's dedicated right. To watching. He, he's this he's leaving a bunch of people hanging. Uh, I will say, I have gone to tournament games before. I'm obviously wearing a shirt from 2015 when I yeah, went. Yeah, I get it. Um, and there, it is a lot of fun to go. You go for it's a full day. You're there. You're watching hoops. You see four <laughs> games. It's it's a lot of fun. But Did they serve beer. Uh, I don't remember. I'm uh, gonna I say so. I yes. think they do. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Anyway, uh, could, I thought you couldn't drink at college games. No, you can. Ah, uh, yeah, you can. You can. Okay. Now you now you can do it at college. When I football. went to Alabama LSU, I had to sneak in alcohol, and I did. I, I know you guys are shocked. Use a mylar did, flask. Yeah, by the way. total pro total tip. Stuff. Pro tip: use the mylar flask. That's how you get you get through the metal detectors. Yeah. So at any rate. Yeah, Scarfs is also probably celebrating the fact that Kenny Pickett, despite the fact that he went to Pitt, is now returning to his native New Jersey, because for those non Pittsburgh or non yeah non Pennsylvania people, Philadelphia is actually part of New Jersey. We were uh, here we part go. Of Pennsylvania. <laughs> so didn't, at any rate, right. didn't, we're getting didn't out Scarfs, of here. Didn't actually didn't Casey once compare Kenny Pickett to Doctor Oz? About I think you <laughs> not not being from Pennsylvania. Oh, that's right. He's from New Jersey. <laughs> I think he did. Yes, but Scarps will be back next week, and yes. I'm sure we'll have yes. plenty of commentary after he has thoroughly celebrated the fact that Kenny Pickett is no longer a Steeler. Yeah, yes. exactly. And on that George. note, we're getting Thank out you. of here. Make sure you check out the website, steelcityblitz.com. Thanks again, Deck Roofing Incorporated, our sponsor. The show originates, of course, from the Bradshaw Bourbon Studio. And thank you to everyone who has been with us live. And thanks to all of you who listen or watch on your own time. Uh, For these idiots, this is another idiot. Signing off. We'll see you next week. And, hey, go Steelers. Ravens suck. Hmm.